But when I think about a guy like Rod Serling, who I was like, I was like on Rod Serling's fucking, you know, on his dick. What's up, everybody? Welcome to A Conversation with Colin. I'm Greg, and this is my roommate, Colin. Now, sometimes Colin says crazy stuff. Mm. So every Tuesday and Thursday, I reach into my random topic file, pull one out, toss it at him, and we talk it out for your amusement. If you like that, like the video, subscribe to our channel, share us with your friends. Colin, are you ready? Yes. Today's topic of conversation is meeting your idols. This is submitted by Edward Kenway. I do not believe that is his real name. Uh, have you met your idols recently in your life? Maybe at our day job, IGN. Idols. Um, no. Really? No. no, no, no. I, was, I was expecting you to say you had. Why? Uh, you met uh, KJ Inafune. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, but my idols don't really have anything to do with games. Mm. <laughs> okay, tell me more. You know, I mean, I, I like, um, yeah, in a, I, I've met in a many, many times. Um, and when I was in Tokyo, he knew who I was, which was awesome. That was, a, cool. that was a great That's movie. Really cool. And I love him very much. Yeah. I love games very much. But when I think about my idols, like, I think about the people that I really grew up, like, revering and, like, you know, the people that really influenced me a lot. Like, mm -hmm. and, and these are, like, weird like you know, like Rod Serling or something like that, or oh, like okay. which you can't meet anymore because he's dead. Uh, <laughs> you know, guys like that, like like people that really influenced me as uh, creatively as a writer yeah. or or something like that. So Ray Bradbury or um, you know things that athletes that I grew up loving, like right, Artis right, right, Urbe right. was my favorite hockey player growing up, and you know those are those are you know my idols. So I don't think that you know. I love meeting people in the game industry. I respect what they do, and I, I love what we do, and I love games, but I don't look at these people as, like, my idols. No. Interesting. No. Interesting. I wouldn't have expected that. Yeah. You're what do, a fascinating young man. What do you... Why? What do you think? Like, the person that make DC Universe your idol? No. I, Jens? Please. No. I have I have a bunch. Like, I would say in, in, in you know, through the video game journalism world and the industry, yeah, I, mean, I would say I've met three of them, right? So I met, like... Uh, Dan Aykroyd, obviously, when I went and did the Ghostbusters thing, right? Like, mm -hmm. and, like Ghostbusters is like what you know defines me in so many levels, right? So, to actually, after years of watching Ghostbusters and reciting it and having my proton pack, and then becoming an adult and buying a proton pack <laughs> and a movie accurate costume and all this stuff, like to meet Dan Aykroyd and interview him and be in the Ghostbusters uniform, talking to him about it, like that was like bizarre and awesome mm. and amazing. You know, I mean, he's mm. so funny and so talented to see to actually get to meet him and have a real one-on-one -on -one It's like, there's so many things I never expected to happen. That's definitely one of them, right? right? Like, I never really expected growing up that you'd, I'd meet the Ghostbusters or whatever and talk to them and have, like, a, a personal conversation with mm. them, not just, like, a handshake and an autograph and a see you later. That was crazy. Right. And then, like, uh, uh, you know, as far as, like, defining what I, you know, our, the day job and stuff, right? Like, for me growing up, I was the biggest EGM fan. Like, I was all about EGM and, like, Electronic Gaming Monthly. It was a magazine. Now it is again. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so I grew up idolizing Dan Shu, right? Like she was the man. She was EGM, right? People always say, "Oh, Greg, you know, Greg, you're IGN to me." Like she was EGM mm -hmm. to me and stuff. And like I remember when I, like this is you know before Google and all this other stuff, and before Facey Paces, and then you got the Twitters and all these other doodads. Like I found his email address, like through searching and figuring out and like piecing things together, and emailed him like, you know, what should I take and what should I take in in college one day when I go to college. And he responded, he's like, yeah, you know, journalism would be great and a minor in Japanese if you can hack it. And I was like, oh my God. And I was like so amazed he spoke to me about mm. it that you jump ahead. And like I had been in the industry six months and I went to a, the Natsume Christmas party and Shu walked in and like I just like froze and I was like, oh my God, like I, what am I going to, and he was with Shane who now works at PlayStation, mm. of course. And I had been on uh, G4's uh, Attack of the Show and done a thing with Shane where we were talking about the controller. So... I walked over to them and I was like, "Hey Shane," and he's like, "Oh hey Greg, what's up?" I'm like, "Nothing." And then I, you know, I'm like, and he's like, "Have you ever met Dan?" I'm like, "No." And Dan's like, "Oh hey man, I'm Shu." And I'm like, I grab his hand and it's one of tw two times in my life, Colin, where I, in your head, you're going, "Stop talking, stop," and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And he's like, "Hey, I'm Shu." And I'm like, "Hey, I'm Greg." And you once answered an email to me and I found it before anybody knew how to send you emails and it was a really big deal. And you say, "He's like, okay, cool, dude." <laughs> and he was like, "Whoa!" Like I was like, "I now work at IGN and it's a huge deal to meet you." And I'm so I'm so proud. I'm so happy. I'm like, I can't believe I meet you right now. You know. Right. He's just like, awesome, cool, I gotta go. And like, years later, we came into a uh, group again and actually became friends, I'd like to think. And I, I, he didn't remember that, thank God. I had to tell him that story. He'd be like, the first time I ever met you, I just I was a raving idiot. Just because, like, he's somebody who totally shaped my life. And then, incredibly recently, this guy, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I didn't even know this guy was one of my idols, right? But, like, you talk about, like, touchstones in your life. Uh, uh, David Crane came in, mm. uh, Activision, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're one, one, an old program. Boy in his blob. Yeah. 
And so, like, I was going to interview him about what it was like, you know, starting Activision and doing all this. And I hope I'm linking these as I'm doing these. If not, description, they'll have all the links to these videos. And, uh, and I was like, okay, yeah. And I went and looked at his Wikipedia page because I knew the basics of him being one of the founders of Activision and all this stuff. But I didn't know, like, his resume. And I'm looking through, looking through, and then it popped up that he made Ghostbusters. He made the Ghostbusters video game. And if you jump back to when I was in kindergarten, Ghostbusters the video game is what got me into video games. I was in Toys R Us. My mom was made the mistake of walking me down the video game aisle on my way to the Ghostbuster toys. And I saw the Ghostbuster Sega Master System box behind the glass. Yeah. Pudgy little finger to the glass. And I'm like, Mom, I want that for my birthday. It's like, okay. And that's what got, that was, that's what made me a Sega kid, number one. Oh, God. <laughs> terrible, terrible luck drawing that. But the Ghostbusters game was really good, right? And like that, that's what ignited my love of video games. That's what started everything that I am now. You know what I mean? Like, and so like when I found that in his Wikipedia page and we did the interview, that's how I opened. I was just like, you don't know this, but you made me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I pulled out the cartridge and I had the Atari version. I pulled out the Atari Ghostbusters cartridge and had him sign it and stuff. And it was just like, that was like one of those, re like it's, you know, it's a small world. We all talk about that. But that was like one of those like fucked up situations of just like, Oh, I'm gonna talk to this guy. Cool, you know, he made a bunch of old school games. And then you like sit down. And you're like, you, if that if you didn't, if that game didn't exist, I don't think I would exist in the same way I do now. You know what I mean? Like, I would have had a later start. I don't know. Probably would have been a Nintendo kid, been brainwashed with the rest of you or whatever. But like, that whatever. was like being crazy. a Sega kid must have just been a horrible. Existence. It was terrible. It was. Um, I don't recommend it. <laughs> but it also makes me understand fanboys. I think a lot better. Yeah. It's, God, Sega. Oh my god, so bad. It was a rough, um, it was a rough road. To it's hope. like your friends it, come over and they're like, yeah, "Let's play video games," and I bring out the Master System. And they're like, "What the hell is that?" <laughs> it's like NES or Master System, Genesis or SNES. Well, we'll save that for another conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, can, we can we can do another conversation about why you know people pretend Sonic was ever good. Uh, but what what I think about what I think about my idols, I mean, because it's not literally what idol means, or whatever, because idol is like the person you revere. But like I always think about the people that I wanted to be. Right, and I didn't sure. want to be Keiji and Afune. You know, right, like, right, right, like right, right, right. I, I loved what he made for me. I never wanted to make games. I liked writing about them mm -hmm, and playing mm -hmm. them. Um, but when I think about a guy like Rod Serling, who I was like, I was like on Rod Serling's fucking, you know, on his dick basically when I was a kid because he was like, like I loved Twilight Zone so much, you know, yeah. and like I was like, I want to be, I want to write this shit. I want to, like, I love sci-fi. I want to do that kind of stuff. The same thing with, uh, you know. Ray Bradbury or like uh, you know just just dudes I really like you yeah, know? yeah like, yeah, like yeah. that like I wanted to replicate in a way and the same thing with Artis Urbe he was a goalie and like I loved him because I wanted to be a goalie like that I wanted to play like him you know yeah, yeah. Um, so that's kind of the way I looked at like the idols I had I mean I, there were people I loved like I loved Derek Jeter when I was a kid and I loved I had like a huge Babe Ruth poster in my, my room and so sure. I loved that kind of stuff and um, obviously like Inafune is as close to an idol as there can possibly be in the industry for me um but I also look at video games differently. I look at video games as something that I enjoy writing about and something that I enjoy critically. And so, um, because I'm not on the other side of the fence, like of making games or whatever, I like feel like the the, the relationship is more like um, symbiotic in a way. Yeah. That yeah. Um, you know, I re I love meeting new people that make games. We know lots of people that make games, and we're friends with some of the people that make yeah. games. And and um, I love them as you know as people. But like you know, idol worship, like nothing's gonna match like how I felt about you know Artis Urbe when I was a kid, or um, you know how how much I love, still love Rod Serling or something. Like when yeah. I watch Twilight Zone at night, when I'm sitting in bed or whatever, and I'm just like, oh my god, this is so fucking good. <laughs> you know, this is so good. Right. I even felt you know, it's funny. I even felt that way about you know what I thought you know Lost was um, good for a few seasons. Early. Like, it's like it's like even J.J. Abrams and goes right. guys like that. I'm like damn, man, you're so good. Yeah, you're so yeah, yeah. talented. Yeah. You know, like. I want to do that, and that's like where, and that's like where idol, idol, you know, the idolization factor for me comes in. So gotcha. It's a little different for us, I think. Well, no, I mean, like, I, you know, Dan Chu, you know, mm. did what I did, like, or but Dan what I ended up doing. Well, he was fat and funny. Yeah. I'm pretty good at that, right? Yeah, yeah you're right. fat. You're fat. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, <laughs> thanks, Colin, for your time. <laughs> Thank you, Edward Kenway, for your amazing Assassin's Creed Four game and that suggestion, ladies and gentlemen. What do you want to see Colin talk about? Let us know in the comments below. Then make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to us on YouTube. Until next Tuesday and or Thursday, have a conversational day.